Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video I will be experimenting with gold pigment powder, applying it in several different ways to uncured aquacast to see what effects and results I will get. I had a variety of results which have really inspired me to explore this method further. So if you would like to see what happened, stay tuned and enjoy the video. If you're one of my regular viewers, you'll know by now that Aquacast casting compound is one of my new favourite things to use. I love it to bits and so that's what I'm using today. Now the properties of Aquacast are almost exactly the same as they are with Hydroflow or Jesmonite or any other two-part casting compound. The difference is, with the two-part casting compounds, as the name suggests, it comes in two parts. You get an acrylic binder and the powder. Now with this one, you just purchase the powder and activate it with water. All the things that would have been in the acrylic binder have been infused into the powder. There are several advantages to this. One of the advantages, which is probably my favourite, is the fact that your working time is increased because you're using water to ac activate the powder rather than an acrylic binder. It just increases the working time so you're not having to rush. Another advantage is that you can use more water or less water to experiment with the fluidity for different kinds of projects because all the magic ingredients have been infused into the powder. So by using less water or more water, you're not compromising the finished piece. So let's get on with the project. As you can see, I've already weighed my water. I've already worked out exactly how much I need of everything by using the calculator on the Elichem website. It's really useful. All you have to do is weigh the amount of water that the mould will take. So you put your mould on the scales, fill it with water to find out the volume in grams. And then you put that volume into the calculator and it tells you exactly how much powder and how much water you need. So it's really good. It's It just makes everything so simple. <laughs> so yeah, I added my water and then the powder and I'm going to give it a good mix. So this is another one of the advantages. Because you're mixing this powder with water instead of the thick acrylic binder, it's much easier to mix to a lovely lump-free paste and it doesn't take long at all. Right then, so I'm using this tea light mould from Devon Dotting, which I think is quite cute. And I'm using white just for the top half of the mould. So I'm going to half fill it with the Aquacast just in the white. And then I'm going to add some pigment. I like to fill it just a little bit at a time. Give it a little bit of a bang. Let the Aquacast find its way around and then add a little bit more and that way you're not trapping lots of big air bubbles in there and you get a much nicer finish. Next I'm going to make two coasters in my round coaster mould from Moulds and Shapes. It's my favourite coaster mould and I've used it loads and loads and it's still fantastic. So yeah, um, I was going to do three but I decided not to do three because this was an experiment and I thought if this doesn't turn out very good, I've wasted all that Aquacast. So I did two and used my leftover Aquacast for something else, which you'll see in a minute. I'm just pouring a little bit in and what my plan was, was to pour it in and then manipulate it a little bit into like a cloud shape. And you'll see why in a moment. 
So once I'd finished pouring in the aqua cast, I just flicked the sides a little bit to help it to settle out and fill in any voids that were left in the ed you know around the edges. And then I took my little um, spatula tool and just moved it around a little bit as you can see, until it started to form that wavy cloud shape. So once I'd finished with the white, it was time to add some pigment to the rest of the aquacast before pouring that in as well. And I used some jesmonite pigments, which work really well with this. I used some blue and some green. I was trying to get a kind of teal colour. It, it turned out more turquoise, really, but I liked it. <laughs> so, yeah, I just kept adding it a little bit at a time until I was happy with the colour. Right then, once that was mixed, it was time to put my plan into action. Now, I've got a little shaker bottle here, which I've had in my drawer for a long time. Oh, look at the mess of my hands. <laughs> I should have worn gloves. Anyway, I've got a shaker bottle and I've put some gold pigment powder in there. Uh, it's the metallic pigment powder. I can't think of the name at the moment, but I'll link it in the description. And I'm just sprinkling it on. That's, that's all I'm doing, just sprinkling it on. And for the coasters, the idea is if I sprinkle it along the edge of that patterned area, I was hoping that it would kind of form a barrier and stop the two colours from kind of blending together and see if I could keep that wavy pattern. So, yeah, that's why I was doing that, just to see what would happen. Because I have these ideas and sometimes they don't work and sometimes they do. But I wanted to see if it would work. So once I'd finished applying the gold, it was time to add the turquoise aquacast. For the tea light holder, I tried to add it as evenly as possible, a little bit at a time. If I'd have just applied it at one end, it would have just been an uneven finish. So I tried to keep going really carefully, backwards and forwards in an even kind of technique. <laughs> Can't think of the word. And as you can see, the way it's gone on, it's kind of left trails. It looks thick and gloopy, doesn't it? But it's amazing. Watch. As soon as you tap it, do you see what happens? It's just amazing. I love this stuff. It just self-levels just at the tiniest tap. It's really amazing. Anyway, <laughs> next I do the same thing. I just apply the turquoise to the void in the mould and it will... Obviously, because that other side isn't filled up to the top, it will all end up moving everything. And I thought, oh, is this going to work? <laughs> but we'll see in a minute. So I put that um, in the void and then tapped it just in the same way. And you'll see the magic happen again. It will just all even out really, really easily. Mind you, saying that, I did struggle a little bit with this mould because it was clinging to my wooden surface. Really, I should have put some paper or something underneath it because as I was trying to lift it up a bit and flick it, it wasn't having it. So, yeah, next time I'll try to remember to put some paper underneath to stop it from clinging. But anyway, I got it level in the end. I had quite a lot of the turquoise aquacast left and so I decided to do the heart in the middle and for this one I decided to pile up the powder to see what would happen with that and so that's just another little idea there and you'll see the results soon so that one's just piled up in like a little lightning flash kind of shape and then again I added the turquoise aquacast then to use up the last little bit, I quickly found my candlestick mould from Devon Dotting and used the rest of the turquoise in there, sprinkled on some gold just like I did in the tea light holder mould and then I had to mix up just a little bit of white because, you know, obviously I needed some white to go with it, make them all go together. Uh, yeah, and I didn't have enough of the turquoise to just fill it with that anyway so yeah I just poured that in cleaned up the mold a little bit and then added the white okay then it's time it's 
about two hours later, I think it was. Let's see how these turned out. Uh, you don't have to actually wait two hours. One hour would have been okay, but yeah, two hours, I think it was. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look. What do you think? Hmm, I really like it, actually. It's not a clean, crisp line like I was thinking it might be. I would, I wasn't hoping it would be. I didn't mind either way, but I kind of thought it would be a much cleaner line. But I like the way that by pouring the aquacast over the gold, it dragged it down and caused that organic pattern. And yeah, I really like it, actually. Let's look at the candlestick. I love this mold because you can just push it from the bottom and it pops out. It's really easy. So let's have a look. Yeah, again, it's picked up the gold quite nicely. And I think it goes well with the other one. Yeah, I'm really happy with that one. Now, let's see what happened with these coasters because this is the one I was really curious about. Right. So as you can see, it's you've got the pattern that you got when you sprinkled the, the gold on. It works kind of like a stencil would. It, the turquoise has kind of blended with the white still. It didn't form a barrier exactly because of all that movement that I got. But it did work. Uh, we've got those curves there. So I was really pleased that although those coasters aren't amazing, they're all right, but I was just really pleased that the idea worked and I could experiment further with that. I thought they looked like clouds and so I thought they needed a silver lining. So in a video you're going to be seeing very soon, I've taken that idea further used a silver lining and got really good results. So I won't show you it now, I'll make another video and that will be coming up very soon. So I've come to the end of my Aquacast experiment. I quite like the finished pieces, um, but the main thing is I learned something really useful and there will be another follow-up video coming very soon where I utilised that cloud method to create something far more impressive. So that's something to look forward to. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you haven't already subscribed and you would like to do so, please do and it will help me a lot. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up and that will also help. And I will see you again next time. Bye for now.